Hey all, Michelle Raza here with Finding Yourself SATX Life Coaching, helping you find your best self since 2017. Today we're going to be talking about communication. Um, in Melody Beauty's book, which we've been covering, this is chapter 17 of her book, um, but actually I'm going to not cover this chapter and instead bring to you something out of a book called More Than Two, A Practical Guide to Ethical Polyamory by Franklin Vo and Eve Rickard. Now you might be asking yourself, what the hell does polyamory have to do with effective communication? Um, and I'll tell you this. So in your life, you have multiple relationships, not necessarily multiple romantic relationships, but multiple relationships nonetheless. You're constantly juggling the needs of your coworkers, boss, employees, um, immediate family needs such as your children, your romantic partner, uh, extended family such as your siblings, your parents. So in our lives we have a lot of different relationships that we're trying to juggle and the tips given in this book about communication styles are actually very effective for working through the multiple relationships that you have to juggle on an everyday basis. So go in with an open mind and give it a chance, not advocating for ethical non-monogamy or the opposite, right? Either way, whatever you do in your life is good but the communication styles talked about in this book are really effective, so I did want to bring that to you. Before we get started, I wanted to talk to you about uh, this week's raffle. So today is September 17th, 2022, the day of publication of this video. Um, so between now and the next two weeks, if you like and subscribe, as well as leave a comment, then go to my website, www.findingyourselfsatx.com. There at the very bottom is my contact information. Please send me an email. I'm going to be raffling off one set of our complete digital package. Um, so that's a $65 value completely free to one lucky winner every two weeks or between the time of this video and the next video. I'm really excited for this. It's, it's a new thing that we're bringing um, to the YouTube base. I know that coaching is out of reach for a lot of you, but you do gain some benefit from the videos. And so I wanted to bring to find a way to bring the coaching package to more people. Um, so please do like and subscribe, leave a comment, then send me an email, and I'll announce the lucky winner in next week's video. Thanks, y'all. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so this is, the chapter is called Communication Pitfalls, and it's out of the e-book on page 87. So I don't know how that translates to a real book, um, but it's definitely worth your while if you want to pick up a copy. It's called, the section is called Passive Communication. Passive communication refers to communicating through subtext, avoiding direct statements, and looking for hidden meanings. Passive communicators may use techniques such as asking questions or making vague, indirect statements in place of stating needs preferences or boundaries. So one of the things that we talked about in last week's video, or sorry, last time's video, um, Melody Beatty's Codependent No More, was about stating needs. So when you're angry at someone, you need to pause, think about what it is that you need from this person, and then go back to them and ask them what you need. And this relates directly to Dr. Gottman's formula for conflict resolution. When X happened, I felt Y. I can take ownership in that ABC. What I need or needed from you was XYZ. You want to state what you need. You often feel angry because you're not communicating what it is that you need. <clears throat> Directly asking for what you want creates vulnerability. And passive communication often comes from a desire to avoid this vulnerability. Passive communication also offers plausible deniability. If we state a desire for something indirectly and we don't get it, it's easy to claim we didn't really want it. Stating our needs means standing up for them and taking the risk that others may not agree to meet them. One way this happens is by couching our desires as questions. Would you like to go out for Thai food tonight? Or worse, 
Don't you think it's been a long time since we went out for dinner? So this is as opposed to stating your desire directly. I'd like to go out for Thai food tonight. So to a passive communicator, such a statement can be a coded way to say, I would like to go out for Thai food tonight. The problem is a direct communicator might naturally hear only what was asked and give a direct answer. So, would you like to go out for Thai food tonight? Don't you think it's been a long time since we went out for dinner? The direct communicator might say, no, I don't feel like, I don't really feel like going out tonight. So, and this is also a difference between what we call ask culture versus tell culture. So it's where you sprinkle, 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 right? The indirect culture, you're, it's considered very rude if you just directly ask for what you want. So you have to kind of socialize it or sprinkle the idea once, maybe twice, and then the third time maybe hint more strongly or ask. And tell culture, that's all too much fluff, right? Why don't you just ask me for what you want? So there are some real cultural differences here. So he says, no, I don't really feel like going out tonight. This can leave the passive communicator feeling disregarded. He or she might end up thinking, he never pays attention to my needs. When to the direct communicator, no request was stated. The other person was asked how they felt and they said, no, I don't want to go out. The direct communicator might end up thinking, they never ask for what they want. They expect me to read their mind. If they wanted to go out, they could have said so. When we're talking about dinner, indirect communication might not matter too much. But when we're talking about things that are more complicated, like emotional boundaries or relationship expectations, indirect communication can lead to crises of misunderstanding. Passive communication is the norm in many families and indeed in many cultures. For readers in North America, which is the audience that this book was written for, it's almost certain that you and your myriad relationships will have grown up with different family and cultural backgrounds and thus have different assumptions about what subtle cues convey which unspoken messages. So looking for hidden messages in such a situation will lead to a very high chance that you'll be quite simply wrong. So this is just a short clip. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about techniques for direct communication. Um, at the end of the day, so whether you're a codependent, it's still, a codependent is going to have a lot of problems stating their needs, um, as well as, so in Dr. Gibson's language, right, the externalizer and the internalizer. The internalizer is the one who becomes the codependent. You want to please everyone, you want to do everything perfectly, and everything has to be right for everyone else. But in so doing, sometimes you forget to take care of yourself. And it can be very difficult to state your needs clearly. And so one of the things that you might practice doing just for yourself is in a journal, start thinking about the things that you want, that you need. So nobody's going to look at your journal. So don't worry about what other people think about them judging you, right? This is just for you. You can even rip it up, burn it, freeze it. You can tear the paper away if you feel too guilty writing this stuff down. But start thinking about you. What are your dreams, your desires, your needs? Because if you don't even know what those things are, there's no way that you can be a direct communicator to tell somebody else that. Um, and start with something simple, something as simple as, what do I want to have for dinner tonight? Not what does my partner like, so I'm going to cook that for them, or what did my children ask for, or you know, the people I'm going out with, what do they want? Think selfishly, even if you don't share it. Even if that night you end up eating whatever your partner, your child, or your friend wanted, what do you want? What do you want for dinner? What would be your perfect evening? If nobody else's desires were taken into account, what would be your thing to do? What book do you want to read? What TV show do you want to watch? It doesn't mean that you have to do it. This is a thought experiment. But I want you to start feeling 
your own feelings, understanding your own desires, and it'll lead to you expressing your own needs to the people who you were trying to have relationships with. Um, so in this book, right, it's a polyamorous relationship. So it's very heavy and very deep. You're having to deal with multiple partners. And so if you're in a romantic relationship, that's hard enough. Try being in a multiple relationship. I'd say that's almost impossible. Apparently, these people know how to do it. So that's cool. Um, but communicating your needs across your multiple relationships in life making sure that you know you and your romantic partner are in a good place that your children's needs are met that you're doing a good job at work whether you're an employee an employer um, a business owner right it's a really a lot of it when you feel like you've been trampled over it's because you failed to assert a boundary and somebody crossed your boundary that either you didn't assert or they didn't respect and so sometimes it's about understanding, like, I feel hurt. Why do I feel hurt? What happened that made me feel this way? Not that you shouldn't feel that way. You want to validate your feelings, but understanding what boundary was crossed. And did you assert it? So are they just being the asshole who didn't respect your boundaries? Or did you not assert that boundary and now you're butt hurt because somebody couldn't read your mind? Right? So we want to think about those things. All right, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Um, super excited for the raffle. So please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and then email me. And I will be drawing the names from the email. So today's today, September 17th, 2022. And the raffle will be in two weeks. So you have two weeks from now until then. I hope that you contact me. I'm super excited to give away one of my coaching packages. Um, and then for whoever wins, I would love to hear your feedback too. The entire program will take you about nine weeks. Um, so from the point that you win until about nine weeks, and that's if you do all seven of the different life balance questionnaires um, and the set seven different life areas, you write out your personal vision statements, you write your goals, and then the most important piece is having your accountability partner. So that's where your coach comes in and holds you accountable. Um, but, you know, coaching is out of a lot of people's price range. So find someone to do this program with. Hopefully you win, you get it for free, and then you and your buddy can do it together and be each other's accountability partner. So super looking forward to that. Really excited to talk to you in the next video about techniques for direct communication. Um, and then we will bounce back to Melody's book. So chapter 17 is on communication. And then 18 is working a 12-step program. So I will go high level over the 12-step program, probably not in detail, because honestly, I feel like the best way for you to go work a 12-step program is to go join one of the anonymous groups. So even if you don't have any issues, right, you're not an alcoholic, you have no problem with alcohol, or sorry, drugs, gambling, sex addiction, anything like that, there is one called CODA. So Codependence Anonymous, join that one. Um, I will list out the steps for you. I just don't really want to read the chapter and spend, you know, a month on it or whatever. Um, but good luck in your journey. Thank you for being here with me today. And good luck in the raffle. I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Bye-bye.